Okay, and my name is Stacy Kimbrell, and right now we're going to get ready for uh, listening to Eric Walton, and I love his topic, and this has helped me and my family so much, learning about the personality uh, test and the relationships. We've heard a lot about this. It's not just for business, but he's going to be going over business today. He's a certified coach. He is a young living diamond. He's been around the block. He's helped so many people. Um, and so I'm excited to hear about Eric Walton uh, tonight and what he has to share with us. When you learn this information, I got to use it with my husband and with my children. And uh, you get to learn how you can encourage people in the way that each one of us needs, because I don't personally need pats on the back, but my youngest son loved pats on the back, right? And so you, when you learn the different personality styles, just even the supermarket or calling your Comcast phone or Verizon or whatever, when you get the person you're talking to, you can learn how to um, speak to them in a way that you can get the services that you need and get help. And they are more than willing to help you do that as well. And it's not gonna be a little tug of war and a fight. So even though this is about business today, you can use this across the whole board with all of your life and all of your friends. And Eric, you're, um, are you there? I am. Thank you, Stacy. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. Can you, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes, you're all good. Good. Well, um, first, let me do one caveat. Uh, I'm going to be drinking quite a bit of water. Uh, my wife and I did get COVID about three weeks ago. Mm. So um, she really had a tough time with it. I'm glad that I didn't have it as bad as she did. But we're on the recovery side, which means uh, it is a nasty little thing. It is a uh, very sticky, so it's hanging with us. So if my voice gets a little bit uh, froggy, when you catch a drink, you'll know why. But uh, I'm really excited about tonight. Stacey, is a great introduction. I'm going to talk about uh, personality tests today, what they can do for you on uh, your personal life, but also for your business. So I'm going to share my screen. So actually, I don't normally do a lot of slides, but I got slides tonight. Okay, so, thank you. Let's share. Let's see. All right, and hopefully you should see my presentation. All right, Stacy, you see the presentation? Um, actually, it just disappeared. It, it was there. No, I, I just saw the same thing. All right, we're almost there. There. There we go. Uh, perfect. All right, perfect. And two people already have raised their hand. Uh, I think that was from uh, the questions from the lab. All right. Okay, well, thanks everybody for joining me tonight. I wanted to talk about personality tests and uh, relationship tool or just a bunch of labels. Uh, I had a, a masculine title, which was relationship tool or just a party trick. The reason I say that is I've been doing this personality test for 40 years. In the corporate world, a lot of companies- hey, Eric, I have to interrupt for a second, hun. It sounds like your microphone is like muffled or something. Back up. Appreciate that, Stacy. Thank you for Okay. Sorry about that. Well. All right. Okay. Good. All right. So one of the things that you're going to find out is personality tests are a way to understand ourselves um, at a deeper level. Uh, Stacy was talking about before about the things that really make a difference for sure. Why did you say what you said? Why did you do what you're gonna do? And what's even more important about understanding better the people around you, your family, uh, your teammates, and how you can help them. Unfortunately, with a lot of the personality tests, we spend a lot of time at a surface level. And if you wanna build real relationships, which by the way, we all know this, relationships are critical to being successful in this business. You, you have to go deeper than just 
oh, they're a red. Like we, we just labeled them and we know everything about them because we said they were a red. And that is such a difficult way to look at people. Um, so I'm looking to try to do something a little bit different tonight and really help you to understand this is an amazing tool, but you've got to invest into it. All right, so let's talk about the strengths and weaknesses and of each and um, all right, next one's the pretty picture. Uh, just as Stacey was talking about, I am a certified Maxwell Leadership Hub and by also a DISC consultant. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, my, along with my wife, we've been a diamond for, uh, gosh, five, six years now. Uh, in case many of you heard, but I'm also the creator of Downline Leadership, uh, which is a, a book, but also a group coaching program. I've coached over a thousand young living leaders and over 150 diamonds. And that's my website that I encourage you to go look at if you want to know more. All right. Today, um, you're gonna learn about different personality tests. I'm gonna share with you, it's not just one, actually there's quite a few of them, um, and, and how to get through that, discover why they can be important, and learn how to improve your communication, which is really the key part about uh, personality tests. That, that's what it's really all about, is to really try to use this tool to help you in that regard, and then making a decision to invest in yourself. And I think that, uh, that really almost says it all right there. All right, let me, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to see the, the really hard part. I'm going to answer the question right away. It's a tool, right? I, I'm just going to say it straight out. It is a tool. I know I talked about party tricks and I'll explain to you why I say that in just a second. But if, it, if you use it improperly, only on the surface or only one time, that's when it gets into the G whiz label world, right? So I was at one company years ago and they were using a, a particular test called the predictive index, which is kind of a business personality test. And they, it was a fabulous test, lots of, lots of interesting things in it. They, they made you take the test, they showed the report, someone went over the report with you and that was it. You didn't, you, no one even mentioned predictive index for the next year until next year at, at the HR review time, you took the test again. And so if you're going to do that with some of these personality tests, I will argue right away, you're just not going to get out of it what you want. And it's going to become essentially just a gee whiz label. And you're going to really do yourself and your relations more harm. Um, now, a couple of things I wanted to, to share with you on how do you actually take these tests? And because that's really a, it's an important part about what makes it different for whether it's just a, a fun game or whether you're going to invest into it. All right. So first, don't choose a test that doesn't resonate with you. These are really, really important. You get a chance to look at these tests, but as you invest into them, they have to, to resonate. They have to really feed back to you. Don't just take the test. Don't cheat on the test or try to game it. By the way, the only one that you're going to hurt is yourself. Don't, for goodness sakes, don't give out the test to your team if you don't believe in it. So let me tell you how to take the test because this is really the core part of, of getting involved with a personality test, right? And a lot of people are, have been in the corporate world. They are using these tests for recruiting now. They use it actually to select out. And so you want to have an understanding of what it means to take the test. So first, number one, you want to answer honestly and from a personal perspective. Don't try to overthink it. Don't try to imagine what someone wants to hear. Just be yourself. It is really important that you review the instructions carefully. Sometimes it's a strongly agree and strongly disagree. Sometimes it's a one to five. It, it, each one of these tests have different ways to answer and you have to really be careful. Now they're not trying to fool you, but each of the tests has a different way to score. So you have to make sure that you read the instructions carefully. Uh, don't pick too many or too few extreme responses. A lot of times you go through the test and you're there's going to be something that kind of draws you, but it's really not you, but you, you were kind of drawn to the extreme version of it. And so you pick the extreme answer. Don't do that often. Keep in mind that as you stay closer to the middle of who you are, you're going to get more accurate results from the test. Really important that you keep you in mind as you go. <coughs> when I say don't game the test, don't, again, try to, you know what, I really want to be known as a DI and DIS, so I, I'm going to answer like I, I'm going to be this driver. Don't do that. Don't get hung up on trying to be something because that's what you want to be. Just look at the question, 
and, and just try to answer it honestly. Um, it's also important to be consistent in your responses. So a couple of questions ago, they asked a question about a particular way, five questions later, they're asking the same thing, but slightly different. Try to realize how you answered the question five questions ago and answer in the same fashion. Um, the other one is take your time. Uh, a lot of times people will tell you, no, no, take it as quickly as you can so that you can you get the most honest answer. That's actually not true. And the reason is that you're not reading the question and the answers with a level of thoroughness if you go too fast. So just take your time, make sure that when you're gonna give it a five or a strongly agree, that that's what you believe. Now, be aware that you're gonna have some so-called wrong answers. What I mean by that, you're gonna answer a question that doesn't really reflect you. Maybe it's because of the way they, they worded some of the answers. Don't get hung up on that. Don't, 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 don't worry about trying to, to be self-corrective or to, to beat yourself up over it. Again, just try to really focus on being yourself. Aim for answers that suggest positive traits. Really try to focus on being that person that is, I mean, what's the positive side of you? Uh, they're gonna look for negatives. You don't need to fall into that trap either. Just again, be yourself. And also prepare for what they call uh, integrity questions. And those are really tough ones because they're trying to really evaluate what they would argue is your integrity. If you do that, all right, you've now taken a test that's gonna give a fair reflection of who you are, which is really the whole purpose, right? Now, let me, let me talk about a couple of different tests. Um, first one I talked about DISC. Uh, what that means is they're gonna use those four labels, D-I-S-C. I'm gonna talk about DISC at a lot, uh, at, uh, a lot more in a moment. Uh, by the way, I'm an IDS, uh, otherwise known as a reformer in DISC. Uh, I use colors. I've been using colors for, gosh, for five years now in my uh, downline leadership program. I will tell you that colors, and uh, you may know a lot of folks in Young Living use colors. Let me give you the amazing strength of colors. It's simple. That, I mean, it is a wonderful, simple personality test. It's very easy to get, embrace it and understand it. Now let me give you the biggest weakness of the colors. It's simple. So if you understand that the, that the colors are a great example of a surface personality test, um, you really have to read Jacob Adamo's first book, but you got to read the second book. You got to do, you got to do a lot of work and hardly anyone does that. So essentially, okay, I'm a red blue. I like to drive towards things, but I like having fun doing it. And I've now labeled myself and everyone knows who I am, which is really not true, but that's what happens when you, when you use the colors. Uh, again, I've used them for many years and I, I use them as a way for people to introduce themselves. Um, but I will tell you that you have to be very careful because it could be shallow. By the way, I'm a rainbow with colors, which is really interesting, which means I've actually equal scored with all four colors, which is kind of neat. Uh, Enneagram, Enneagram is one of my favorites because I believe Enneagram is one of the best ones on a, a personal, really in-depth relationship basis. I don't think that the Enneagram does as good a job on the business side, but man, trying to dig in if you're a, a nine wing two, Right to really dig in to what you're going to develop from that, not only understanding who you are, but able to talk to our son who's a four and what that really means. It really, really gets deep. I'm a big fan of Enneagram, but you really have to invest into it. Okay. And like I said, I found it to be a little less helpful to me in the business, but on a personal level, Enneagram is just phenomenal. And oh, by the way, again, because I tend to be this rainbow kind of person, I'm an 827 which is like hard to believe that I've actually three numbers that are all equally scored, but that's how that came out. You can tell I'm being consistent now, right? Because all my scores are, are multiples. Uh, Strength-based leadership is one of my favorite ones um, because what it does is it focuses just on your leadership skills. So one of the things I like about the personality test is there are times when I want to pick one that's going to go just to what I want. So I'm a leadership coach. I'm a John Maxwell leadership coach. So I love to focus on leadership. So when I take that test, I'm trying to help someone specifically with their leadership. And so it's very helpful. Uh, Myers-Briggs has been around forever. And I talked about the predictive index. There are many others, okay? There are many others. And I think, remember that what I said, the key part was to invest into your time to find the one that's gonna make a difference to you, all right? 
Now, so what's the real value of using this test? We just talked before, I use the personality colors to help people introduce themselves, but that's at a surface level. Well, there's two reasons that you need to see this when you choose the right test for you, that when you invest, you're gonna get this benefit. Number one, you're gonna be able to dig deeper into who you are. Why do I say what I said and why did I do what I, I, I just did? You're not gonna have questions because you're gonna be able to have a much more reflective ability because you've been trained in how to utilize this test to understand who you are at a deeper level. So when something happens, you'll know, wow, I was under stress. I know that I'm normally these two colors, but under stress, I go to this one, or I'm an Enneagram nine, nine wing two, but wait a second, every now and then my four will appear under what circumstances. When you get a chance to know all those things, it's, it really starts to enable you and empower you to actually handle these circumstances better. There have been many times I'm in an emotionally charged moment and I recognize right away, oh my gosh, if I let this continue, I'm not going to do well. So not, instead of pretending that I can handle every situation great, I'll stop the conversation and say, I'm sorry, this is going to go a place where I'm going to feel uncomfortable and I'm going to say some things that may not be who I mean or I may say things that I don't want to say. So if you're all right, I'd like to stop the conversation um, and, and go a different direction. I'll actually do that. I'll shock people that I'll, well, I thought we were having a good discussion. I said, listen, I'm, I know where this conversation is going for me and I'll stop it. And, and, and I, have, I have saved myself for some really embarrassing points, but I've also saved myself from hurting some people that I didn't want to hurt because I knew what, where the nature of it and where, where some of my weaknesses are. So second, we talked about the first reason you want to use these tools is for you. The second one is to learn more about other people. So your team, uh, your neighbors, your prospects, you're going to learn how to communicate with them because it helps you to become aware of the pattern of how they communicate. So think about this. You don't want to just know what kind of communication they want to use, that they want to use text, but you want to know what to expect from them but also what to, uh, how to best prepare for the conversation, how to interact with them, and how to respond to them in order to have a successful connection. So this is trying to get way past those days when we just want to know, do you prefer a text or a PM or a DM? We're now trying to, so what do you say in the message, right? Well, I want to say things that are going to really appeal to them. Stacy talked about before, her, uh, her youngest likes getting pats on the back. Our youngest hates pats on the back. Hates it. He is the, the situation where he grew up, he, he was always the overachiever. And he always thought that he was going to try to do a really great job of becoming that person that was going to overcome all the odds against him. He was going to play basketball, even though he wasn't tall. He wears the state championship ring. Well, how is that possible? Man, you don't need to tell him great shot or how to score a couple points. Hates that. Now, he does like recognition but he likes it in a very specific way at a specific time. Hmm, isn't it more valuable that I've learned this about our son so I know how to give him a compliment and when he'll receive it and say, thanks, dad, versus dad, don't need that. And now that, you know, now he's in his 30s, so it's a whole lot different. Um, he just got done closing a big deal and I have to know how to say, hey, great job, without it sounding shallow to him well, Dad, that's what my job is, is to close deals. So I, I have to be very careful. Of that. So that's what this is all about. You want, if you think about it, when you get to do this, you're going to start to interact with people on your team at a much different level. That's what this is all about, changing the game so that this really does change uh, everything that you can imagine. Okay, let's keep going here. All right, that's real important now. We talked about labels. It's really important that when you are doing any of these tests, that each of us has all of the styles within us. So even though I came out as an IDS, I have C in me. It, even though I come out as a rainbow red, well, I have all the colors in me. And if you come out as a nine wing two, you have all the numbers in you and the, there's opportunities for those to come out. This framework of trying to use, a per, to, to use a personality test is to become a situational person so that when you're talking with someone, 
and they just lost their grandmother. Yes, everyone knows how to share in that grieving, but you really know how to talk to them because you know how they're processing that loss. Some people, it's if their grandmother raised them, it's a really big deal. Other people, they saw their grandmother once a year. It was a different kind of experience. They're, they're losing a memory, but not so much a relationship. So we have to recognize that we have all the styles in us and we have to know how to pull them out when it's appropriate, right? All right, so let me just talk for a second. Um, do a little bit of background. These personality tests have been around since about 400 BC. Okay, so this is not something brand new. This is not something that is a, it's not invented by Elon Musk. Um, really, the, the personality tests have been around for a very, very long time. And I showed you a couple of pictures of people that actually thought of them back in 400 BC, Empedocles and uh, Hippocrates. Um, but it really started getting interesting when um, we got into the Myers-Briggs, which is where Carl Jung, very famous um, doctor and uh, psychiatrist. And that was really starting to, Myers-Briggs was the first one that started to attach to people's thinking, hmm, if we can understand these dynamics about people, we get a better chance to understand what motivates them and how to help them, right? This led into uh, William Marston, which also did DISC. And you see the letters there, dominance, influence, steadiness, and compliance. Um, and, and what that looks like, these are the people that made a difference in the history. And these other ones that came out, the colors came out later as the predictive index. And so and Enneagram has been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. All right. So one of the things to think about is what, is, what, what shapes your personality? And there's three primary drivers here. It's your heredity. So what's going to shape your, your, one of the things that shapes your personality is your gene pool. And, 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 and literally what came from, um, what came from your parents in that regard, but it's also environment, which of course is your parents, how you were raised, the environment you had at school, big city, small town, country, city, um, all those dynamics, uh, north, south, east, and west, all those factors have an impact on how your personality is going to continue to develop and be enhanced. And the last one, of course, is role models. Uh, everyone has role models in their lives. And there are times when there are positive and negative ones, but they still had an impact. Uh, if, you've had a, if you had a wonderful set of parents and you had both a mother and a father, it can make a big difference to how, how that impacted you. Other people are the product of a single, of a single parent. Uh, other people are the product of a dysfunctional um, set of parents uh, where they either, they could be uh, abusive, either verbally or physically. All those things have a factor. So when you, you just want to be aware of those as to how, where did I come from, but also how other people came to that same spot. I recently met a young guy and, and he was just struggling with something and I couldn't understand why. It, was, it seemed to be put together pretty well. Um, well, his mother was an alcoholic and, and I did not know that. And so he had this, this tremendous fear of any addictive behavior. So whenever he expressed any kind of behavior in himself that would appear to be addictive, he would freak out and would drop it. Well, unfortunately, there were some things that he was doing. There was some good behaviors that he was, that he was having, but he just always tried to do something new. And I always wondered why that was. Well, when you find out what he would, you know, how he was brought up, this comes there. So let me, as an example of all this, I'm going to do some stuff just with DISC, okay? I told you I was going to talk about that before. DISC is, to me, it's the personality colors, but with Enneagram thrown in for a little bit of flavor. And more importantly for me, I find it to be the best one for your business, okay? Now, remember, I, I said you have to choose the one that resonates with you. For me, DISC helps me with my business, and I'll explain why. Uh, as we go through it, okay? But we're just going to use this as a framework. And I want to go through what it is to be on this, but not to try to persuade you, but to show you what it is to start using these tools, all right? So let's keep on going there. So let me give you an example, right? So here's a test scenario for you. You're waiting for an elevator. And as the doors begin to open, you secretly hope that no one else is in the elevator, so you won't have to go through, go through that awkward moment as you walk into the elevator or trying to figure it out if they're gonna to want to talk with you. So you press the button for the floor you want, you look at the button panel, you should use the door, the floor numbers as they change. You wish the elevator would go a little faster so you can make your quiet exit. 
Raise your hand if that's like you. That would indicate a more reserved nature. Right? This make, by the way, these are not bad nor good. They're not making you right nor wrong. It's just when you get into an elevator, what is the kind of person that you are? This is just a simple example. By the way, think about this. These are the kinds of things when you are trying to explore how to identify what people are, you have to start thinking of these kinds of scenarios so you can ask questions that are going to start to reveal the people that they are. All right, let's do another elevator. Same elevator. Except as the doors begin to open, you're curious and super excited to see who's on the other side. Can't wait to see who's in the elevator. The minute you walk in, you say a hearty hello to everyone as you press the button before you begin to ask them how their day has been and then make a joke about the weather. Well, this is someone who's a much more outgoing person. Doesn't, again, doesn't make the right or wrong. And, and you, you just, they, they enjoy life. They enjoy the social interaction, right? So if you think about this, if, if, in the elevator, if you're the person who didn't really want to talk to strangers, then perhaps that, that reserve person, but it's also, this, this is just an observation. It doesn't define who you are. It's a description of how you will tend to act in a particular situation, right? So what you're trying to identify is based on these questions, I want to start to understand better what I prefer and the most important thing, why, right? Let's do another example. Let's talk about a vacation. So you're planning on a vacation and you're focused on what needs to get done in order to go. You got to mow the lawn. You got to take the dog to the kennel. You got to take the car in for your service. Uh, maybe you line up some work that has to be done while you're out, or you're looking to see if the hotel has Wi-Fi so you can answer emails. Well, if if that's you, that's a particular kind of personality traits. Trust me, not everyone who goes on vacation has the list there that she has um, to go to the list. Not everyone does that, right? Well, let's have vacation mode. So you're focused on who's going with you. Right, the, the, the whole thing about vacation for you are the people that are with you. You're caught and think about who you're going to see when you get there. Who are we visiting? You're going to get there and all the fun experiences you're going to enjoy. I know for those that are into personality because you're thinking of someone that's blue. Um, but yeah, that's because the, the sense of joy that you're getting is from the people that are part of your circle. So just from two questions, what we, we asked an elevator question and we asked a vacation question, right? Just from those two questions, you're getting a chance to discover the pattern of their personality. And you're starting to uncover the kind of individual they are by asking these questions. Because people always ask me, so how do I discover if someone is a DI or an IIC? How, how do you do that? Well, by asking questions and observing how they answer, what their, what their response is, and being able to identify, this is the training part now, investing into the tool so that when you see this, when you get those answers, you know what to do with those answers, okay? Um, let's do one more. Um, we did the vacation as well. And that, that kind of dealt with the people side as to who you wanted to be with and why that was important to you. Or were you more uh, focused on the calendar, the schedule, making sure that everybody got to take care of, okay? All those things are good, but it's setting you up for what is the power that this is going to bring to you, okay? And again, forgive me. I'm just trying to use this as an example. Uh, yes, it's my personal favorite, but I'm trying to get to, to get you to see the value of, of these personality tests, all right? All right, we're going to use the elevator. We're going to use the vacation. Um, so when you think about this, you see the, the outgoing and you see dominant influencing. Um, you see steady and compliant. Those are the D, I, S, and C. And you're trying to understand what it means. Um, D's and I's, as you can see, up above tend to be more outgoing. And C's and S tend to be more reserved, right? There's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's how people tend to interact with information as they go, okay? Now, as we, uh, as we keep trucking here, aha. So let's go, um, let's go to this concept of what does it really mean to dig into being a disc uh, we talked about D's and C's, uh, focusing first. Actually, let me go back a second. Uh, that's what I forgot to do. All right, so if you do dominant and C, they like to be task-oriented. So if you're looking at the grid here, we said dominant influencers like to be outgoing. We said compliant and steady like to be reserved. 
but dominant and, co and compliant like to be task oriented. I forgot to do these, these things at the end because one of them got, I'm gonna try to do this again, there we go. Um, they got hooked by people oriented. So the influencers are the steady people are people oriented. So you see that there's a matrix here, right? It, and this is where the complexity comes in. And this is why you can't just go play with these tools and, and just pretend that you can learn them in a day. You really have to invest time and energy into them. But the benefits of when you do that, um, gosh, I, I have some friends that are really big in Enneagram and have read the more than three books kind of thing. And they're just so quick and so insightful in being able to, to, to help people with who they are, but more importantly, to help them and how they will lead them if they're on their team because they went through that. Same idea here with the disc. You want to spend some energy and time uh, doing that, okay? Now, let's go to this where we're, uh, we're going to go into the four styles, all right? So here's how you know you're communicating with a D. You agree to go to lunch with them, and they insist on driving even if it's your car, All right? So that's a classic uh, D, someone who is really going to be a dominant a personality. They're gonna drive your car, whether it's your car or not. Uh, and some, some straights here, they seek control, they're decisive, they're direct, they're really focused on results. By the way, the, this is not bad nor right nor good, it's just who they are. Um, they make quick decisions, they, are, they focus on the results, but only 3% of the population is D. I know a lot of people think that that, because kind of if you go to the colors, a lot of people think they're red. There are a lot of Ds in Young Living. It is one of the personality traits that is that helps to be successful in multi-level marketing is when you're a D, all right? Now, um, if, you, if you think of someone who is in your circle of friends who are fun to, with, fun to be with and can tell stories that kept your attention, they're likely I, right? Again, the people that like to tell stories and, and stories are great, right? But I's represent about 11% of the population. I's tend to be persuasive, they're spontaneous, they're friendly and, and they, they like to be in the spotlight, right? And, and there's again, nothing wrong with it, but these are the kind of people. So when you're trying to, when you're trying to share with someone, it's important for you to know what, what, how they're gonna wanna internalize the information you share with them. All right. Same way, if you are, uh, if you're an S, you tend to be loyal, helpful, can always be rel relied upon to follow through, because S's and this is 69% of the population have a dominance in, in being S. They're team oriented. They follow through. They're loyal and and they're and they're accepting of things, right? They're great at follow through. Isn't that an important thing for young living? And so you having a bunch of S's on your team is actually a good thing. They're going, to, they're going to be loyal to not just young living, but loyal to you as well and how that can make a difference, okay? Now, if you keep going though, if you're looking for people that are always on time, their desk home and even their garage is very organized, it might even have labels. These are the C people. These are the compliant people, right? They're, they're compliant, they're analytical. They like to plan, they like to be accurate. They don't like to round 17% of the population are, are in this category. So let's look at the, um, the, some more characteristics of each style, because again, it'll help you to really see more. Now, the detail that I'm going through here is the benefit of, of seeing how these particular personality traits, as you learn them, it again, helps you to understand who you are better, but also helps you understand the other people. So again, um, these focus on results, uh, they're driven by authority. Um, they, they, do, they are multitaskers. They easily will take control uh, or try to take control. Um, they embrace any change that's going to help them get results, which is really, really interesting uh, because they're the ones that try new things quickly if they think it's going to be there. They do treasure loyalty. And I love this. Their greatest fear is being taken advantage of. So um, think about someone you might know who is a great job on graphics and really, 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 really hates when someone takes one of their graphics, one of the oils, and uses it without her permission. Right? That's someone that that's someone who is obviously a D. And it, you know, I, I've got another person who who gladly shares their pictures. But for Mary, it means, hey, Mary, would it be right if I use this picture? One question will change the dynamic of your relationship with Mary because you know who she is. 
She's, you know that she spends a lot of time on those pictures and all she wants is to be able to get permission to use the picture. You go, this is not a big deal. You can get pictures anywhere. But for Mary, her pictures are important to her, right? It doesn't, not right or wrong. It's just, it's just the way that works. Um, they tend to be bold and confident, decisive, productive, strong-willed, independent, positive, persistent. They excel in emergencies. Uh, you're having a vendor event and something goes wrong. The Ds are almost always the ones that actually help you get through the, the crisis. They motivate others to action. They're goal-oriented. Their values are a business way of socializing. They're comfortable leading. They thrive on resistance. They're going to buck the wind. They're going to make things happen. Man, this is just a good thing to have when you're trying to, to make things happen in a brand new world of the pandemic world that we're in. What are some obstacles? Um, <laughs> they're argumentative. They frequently can be inconsiderate because they're moving too fast. They're very opinionated. They don't throw out compliments because they don't need them. It's not important to them. So because it's not important to them, why would they throw them out? I already said, talked about Mary being possessive. Um, they tend to not apologize. They frequently are insensitive. They're definitely domineering and patient. Have trouble relaxing. And they can be unforgiving and can appear cold. Well, again, this doesn't make them a bad person. These are the things that you, when you're looking for, you realize that, at this moment, they need to be moving. They can't sit. They're not going to wait. They're, they're, they don't get to the airport two hours early. That would be just the end of the world for them. They're going to get there at the very last minute, get on the plane, get out of the way, open up the computer, do some work, because they got things to get done before they get to the next city. They're not afraid of conflict, but they can become, they can make the, make the argument go the wrong direction, too. So again, if you're dealing with someone who's a D, it helps you to do that. All right, let's go back onto the eyes. Sure, I got that. There we go. Uh, they're, they're always active. Eyes are always, the, the eyes don't sit still. They are very relationship oriented. Their day revolves around the people they're going to talk to, the people they're going to interact with, being emotional, animated. Uh, they love telling stories. In fact, that's how they interact with people. They, they tell lots of stories. Uh, I had an example here. And as you talked to me, you heard me before. That's why my eye is my highest. I love telling stories. They're wonderful at being encouragers. And uh, they, they treasure great experience with others. I'm the one, the kind of person that, if I, I think in terms of the vacations I've had, I always relate to the vacation I had with someone. Uh, I'm looking for, not because not I saw some great trip. I've traveled a lot in my career. And much of it was by myself uh, uh, as an executive. I don't, I don't think, I can hardly remember any of those trips. Yet I remember the times I went to San Diego with my family each and every trip. It was so much more important to me. Um, they're going to seek a fun, friendly environment, a, a friendly environment, but where they all get a chance to keep on being active. They're going to be relationship oriented, uh, emotional. It, it's, it's what makes them so important, right? They're, they're going to be persuasive, right? Um, they're going to get a chance to, to be generous and charismatic, enthusiastic, talkative, such wonderful descriptions, likable and fun and optimistic. They're going to be the life of the party. They're going to be the people that are going to be, other people are drawn to. It's a wonderful uh, thing to be an eye. But guess what? They have obstacles too. Um, eyes desks tend not to be organized as I look around at the piles on my desk. Um, they can be naive. Um, they always think the best of people, by the way, always which means that they can get hurt um, because someone wasn't uh, genuine. Um, they can get distracted uh, because they're constantly looking for the fun things that are happening. Uh, sometimes they don't listen well. Um, sometimes they, they, they waste time uh, because they're looking, they're, they're trying to read too many articles at the same time. What about an S though, right? We talked about um, what it means to be the steady person. Uh, they seek a, a team environment. They're very loyal. They're easygoing and agreeable, evenly paced. They're good listeners. They're compassionate. They're treasure uh, peaceful. Remember, this is the majority of the population. And so when you know, <coughs> excuse me, that you've got an S on your team, it's really important. You get a chance to be a part of that, of that effort, okay? They're also hard workers, team players, steady, secure. Uh, they can be sentimental, but they, they save things. They, they like to find the easy way. They are faithful, close friendships. 
Uh, they're peaceful and supportive. Really good strengths, right? The kind of people that you want to kind of be around. But again, as you know, can be too laid back. <laughs> they can also get sarcastic, which is really interesting to, to, for the study. They like a slower pace. They're slow to start. They're not, they're not always morning people without a couple, of a couple of couple of cups of coffee. Although according to Ed, who I had to follow, I guess two cups of coffee is the right thing to do. Um, but they're definitely in that category. They can be possessive, indecisive. They may not always speak up. Now think about this. Most of your team are S's. And so if you're not asking questions to, to get them involved, they may not speak up. Whose fault is it if they don't speak up? Them or you? It's you. Because you're not the one asking the kind of questions to get them engaged. You need the S's in your team to make a difference, right? So about the, the C, the compliant, they're conscientious, they're accurate, they're detail oriented in the color world, these are the greens. Uh, when you need a spreadsheet, these are the ones that they spit spreadsheets out for breakfast. Um, they are just always focused on having data. They make data-driven decisions. Uh, the greatest fear, by the way, is criticism because it takes them a long time to perfect what they've had. So they are, they are under the assumption that everything you do is perfect because they worked at it for weeks. And so they have fear of being criticized as well. It's interesting. Um, but they're analytical and they're data-driven. They're deep thinkers. They tend to be very serious. They are the ones that want to get that last piece of information that, that the, uh, the dominant one, they made a decision in one day and the, uh, the compliant one is trying to make a decision in three weeks. Obviously, the real world is frequently in between. The dominant moved too quickly and the compliant moved too slowly, but that's who they are. They're really trying to make sure they have everything that they possibly could get to make the right decision. And they will let that uh, drive them, <laughs> drive everyone else crazy when they do that. Um, they can be uh, socially insecure. They don't want to be part of large groups because they'd rather be by themselves studying. And so um, <laughs> that perfection is they avoid risk. They may not see the big picture, right? And, and you're trying, again, when you know that these are things that will hold them back, you want to be able to help them. Now, again, why is the purpose? So why is the purpose of knowing what your disc is or your, your personality and uh, style? Because connecting increases your influence in every situation. So now I want to get to the business side here. The reason that you want to use a personality uh, test, a personality program, a personality method is so that, again, you know who you are and you are, you are able to quickly understand who they are and you become an influencer. Now, remember, here's the hard part. Not a single person on your team works for you, reports to you. You can't hire or fire a single one. Can't. You can't change their comp plan. You can't change their check. The only way to lead people on your team is through influence. And the only one of the best ways to increase your influence, of course, is by increasing your connection. How do you increase your connection? By having a stronger relationship. How do you have a stronger relationship? Because you worked hard to do that. So yeah, I know we talk about the, uh, the golden rule, right? But which is you want to every, treat, every, treat everyone how you would like to be treated. But I want to, I want to offer the platinum rule, which is to treat people how they would like to be treated. It's a really, really big difference now. I know we were all taught the, taught the golden rule. This is where the personality tests have a big impact, how they change things. I'm no longer trying to, trying to help people because that's how I would be, I want to be helped. I'm trying to help them in the way that they want to be helped. I can only do that by knowing who they are. All right? So when you think about the communication, but the main ones are to be able to motivate them, express your feelings and form, but also to, to get to that point of influence of how you can help them to achieve them goal, their goals. So we talked about this early on, but it's the responsibility to not only do the communication in the right format, whether they wanna do a Zoom call or phone call, but also do it with a message that's going to address who they are and how they like hearing things. Again, you wanna to get to exactly where, what is the best way to communicate with them so that they can hear your message. So that's what's really important. You want to make sure that you're asking um, what, not how questions, um, you know, and, and what, that, what that means. Actually, let's go to uh, how do you communicate with a D? 
All right, so I try to talk to someone who's very dominant. So you want to be brief, direct, to the point, and then stop. You want to ask what, not how questions. Why not ask how questions of a D? Because they don't need help with how. They would rather be left alone. They'll figure the how out. They just want to be you know, asked, what are you going to do so they can tell you. They're going to, you want to focus on your results. Heaven forbid, you do not want an I talking to a D if they're going to ramble a talk and tell stories. Ds get driven nuts. They just want to understand what's the problem? How am I going to help? Get out of my way. They're going to go get it done. Right? But that's communicating with a D. Again, not right or wrong. How do you communicate with an I? <laughs> don't do all the talking. They want to talk. Heaven forbid, don't ignore their ideas. They're sharing their inner thoughts. They're, they're, they get very transparent very easily. They do want to allow time for socializing. They do not want to talk business the entire time. They, they want to follow up with details in writing because they probably didn't write anything during the meeting. And they'd rather have four short 10-minute discussions than one 40-minute one. How do you communicate with an S? So an S is looking for a friendly tone. Tone is particularly important with an S. So am I in a softer, friendlier voice? Or am I in a hard edge voice where I'm trying to make a presentation and make a point? They would prefer the friendlier tone. So showing interest in them as a person, not being overly aggressive, minimize the potential for confrontation for sure, giving them time to adjust to any changes, right? That's what they're looking for. How do I talk with a C? <laughs> you, when you get ready for a C, it means you better have all your communication ready, all the details, all the facts, all the tables, all the spreadsheets. Um, you got to bring all the reports. You have to be very specific. They're not looking for a 30,000 foot level. They want a three foot level uh, look at their problem. You have to be patient because they're going to have a bunch of follow-up questions. They're going to ask a ton of things that they want to know or, they, or they're going to be paralyzed. They will not be able to move forward. So you have to be prepared to get all these questions. Some of them are going to seem to be trite. It won't matter. Every single detail is important to them. Whether there's a huge question or a small question, to them, they're all important. So you really got to make sure you do that with the C. But what's the whole purpose here? Deeper relationships. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make sure we get to where we're really forming those relationships with people on our team, where they are valuing the time that we spend with them because you're spending it in a way that they are most comfortable in receiving. So a lot of times I get asked, you know, what is, what style is the best? Eric, what's your style? I already said there was an ID, uh, IDS, but what, what, what style is the best? Well, let me tell you the answer. Yours. The only one that really matters is your style. Who are you? And once you figure out who you are, then being open to understanding that there are other people and they're going to be different. And being open to people being different and then how to communicate with them. Right? That's the whole point of what we're trying to communicate tonight. So let me do one thing. <clears throat> As I close out my last slide here. I hope that you came away with a great appreciation, appreciation uh, personality test, the values that they represent as tools. And I hope you came away with a disc as one of the ones that uh, is my particular favorite. Let me explain why. In the next month, I'm gonna be introducing a disc class where you're gonna get a chance to take the test. You're gonna get a full explanation of who you are, a better understanding, and then also learn how to relate better with others. Now, what's interesting, now I'm going to get business on you, and really, I'm going to use a couple of four-letter words, so be careful. There's a particular version of this of the DISC test that is for sales. I know that we, when I say sell, S-E-L-L, -L, I may be swearing, um, but what I'm really trying to talk about, I'm just being honest with everybody, that's our role. We're sales reps. I know that we use the word share often here. But in, a, in the functional org chart in Young Living headquarters, it says my name, Eric Walden, and it said, I'm in the sales organization because I represent how product goes from them, the producer, to end users. I sell. Well, wouldn't I like to get a disk test of my sales strengths and weaknesses? Wouldn't I like to get a, oh, by the way, they have another one for sales leaders so that I can help the people in my team sell better. Now, for all those that are listening, please, please replace the word sell with share. Wouldn't you like to get a DISC test 
that helps you understand what your strengths and sharing are so that you can do them more and that know when you have a weakness in sharing, how to either avoid that or work on them if necessary. So these two special versions are for me what separates this from the other personality tests. The other ones are really around relationship. These two tests are gonna help me in my business because I wanna sell and I will be, I'll, I'll be offering these two tests specifically, the sales and the sales leader. And um, I really, really hope you get a chance to take those and to learn more about how you can improve the way. Imagine getting a test that helps you understand if you use this phrasing It'll, you'll be better at communicating to people. If you're talking to an I, here's how to sell best to an I. Wouldn't that be really cool? Let me, let me, let me just give you uh, an example of that. Just happen to have one here. Let's just say, for example, um, you're trying to sell. Um, if you are, your primary selling style is a D, but your customer is, um, is also a D. You want to be directed to the point. You want to focus on the results and the benefits. You want to talk to them. If you're talking to a D, you want to talk to them about how the oils are going to specifically benefit them. Now, I know we all share about the benefits. No, a D has to have that first, second, third, and all. I mean, that's how a D wants to hear, why am I going to buy these, right? Don't overpromise. Don't joke around. Don't mislead with any kind of claims. And when they are ready, they just say, let's do this now. Everybody know what I'm talking about, right? Y'all have that. Someone says, I want the kit now. That was likely a D. But you have to know that's the kind of person you're selling to. What, what, if, what if the person's an I? So when you're talking to an I and you need to, to hear their stories, they're going to share with you what's going on with their family and their health and wellness. This is not cutting them off time. Eyes need to talk. They need, so as you hear their story, it enables you to present to them a better solution to help them. Don't give them too many details. <laughs> Don't be short in your responses. They, they want to talk. They want to relate. They want to build a relationship with you. But they want to. They will tend to buy when they want to say, wow, I'm really excited. Let's do this together. That's a typical thing that an I would say. So a couple of things that I just did are the kinds of things that you learn when you get a sale-related DISC test. Really different, right? So anyway, a uh, long pitch to say, uh, if you want to go to www.downlineleadership.com later this month, I'm going to offer that, uh, that class. In the meantime, um, later this, in about three weeks, uh, three week, two weeks, uh, I'll be starting my next, uh, my next Downline Leadership. Uh, we, have, we have multiple groups that are open. I encourage everyone that is interested in improving their leadership to go take it. A thousand people in your living can't be wrong. And I really encourage you to do that. Uh, let me stop sharing here, Stacy. And I don't want to promote being an expert on personality tests on all of them, but um, I have not been reading notes. If there's any notes been going on, I've been uh, focused on the presentation. So if there's any questions, I'd be, I'm open to answering the best I can. Uh, thank you so much. And I just put your link in here as well. And obviously, this oh, sounds thank you fantastic for um, all of us and anyone who is interested because it is important to learn how to share slash sell to people and their personalities. I am definitely, I love listening to this. I am definitely a hardcore D, but I do apologize all the time if I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with that, just so you know. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. And so you learn. And in the beginning, you know, I've learned like I'm all the personalities. Mm -hmm. I have the least amount of blue. Um, unless I'm teaching because I like to have fun while I'm teaching, but, um, you know, it's good to be all of them. You got to learn who you're talking to and, you know, no matter what the situation is. And the only thing that you uh, didn't cover, but it sort of pairs hand in hand, if I may say, Please. is just when you get into the five love languages yes. and, and accompanying that along with all of this is like so important. Cause it's like, you know, when you, uh, get something for somebody like I rather have if if someone gave me uh, a dandelion out of the yard or made a homemade gift I don't care if it's cute ugly useful not whatever like that means something to me I don't care about diamonds and and material yep. things um, but since my mother-in-law and my mother are not going to be ever probably watching this you know we used to make handmade um, gifts for our 
you know, like the kids' handprints and all that kind of stuff. But they're, you know, they're 22 and 26 now. But And both of them would ask, well, where's our real gift? And I was like, what? <laughs> you know, so learning who you're t- talking to, whether, uh, you know, obviously this is focused towards business with the, the DISC program. And I heard about this one a long time ago and all the other ones you offered. It's great to learn all of them. And you'll hear everyone's like, oh, well, you're a red or you're this or you're that, or, you know, whatever. And yeah. then we get label okay all the red go over here and then all the blue go over there you know <laughs> yeah. and really that's not necessarily true because most of us all have a little bit of all of it it's just depending what's your dominant and then really learning how to work it and then one thing when i first did mine mine was on um gosh what's the other personality test with um a sanguine uh, you know all that you know talking about the no, melancholy sure. the sanguine oh oh i know oh gosh what's the name of that i know the, the personalities plus book um, i think uh, yeah something yeah, yeah. And that was from back in the day. That's the first one I learned. And I thought, yeah. okay, well, you you really have to do this test, like you're saying. Um, and of course, I think I'm fabulous, right? So yeah. but am I really? Maybe not. So I, you always ask your spouse or a close friend or someone that you trust, say, is this me or is this what I want to be like? And that's what you're talking about, answering honestly, so that if you're looking for that uh, characteristic or that trait um, that you may not have, you can learn how to develop that as well. And the things that you do do that you perhaps aren't the best choices um, yeah. or traits that we can learn uh, how to change that. And then anything's changeable, like how I grew up and like you have single um, family children right. being single raised, parents, yeah. you know, that come out and just like incredible. And you have people you know, I know you have children too, and most mm-hmm. of us probably on this call do. I raised my kids exactly the same, and they are two totally different people. <laughs> yeah, so this is where possible? the genetics comes in. But all of us have, I'm very much like my mother, and of course my mother can be fabulous. But, you know, I had to learn really quickly not to be, you know, witchy poo, right? Yeah. And so, and but when you're raised in an environment of yelling or doing this, then why wouldn't you do it? But if it wasn't for my husband stepping up and saying, you know what, um, I know I grew up like this. I don't want this in my life. So you have a choice to learn how to talk at a normal level yeah. or then I can't be with you. And I was like, oh, my gosh, like if someone doesn't ever set that precedence and help you understand that that's not a appropriate behavior to carry on. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's just a great learning opportunity for everybody in all stages. And this is the beauty of young living is where do you even learn about this kind of stuff? Like if it wasn't for Young Living, I would have never even learned about the colors, about, right. you know, all the different uh, options here, the five love languages, you know, all of that. So it's just, it's such a wonderful opportunity and the business one. So you're saying in a couple of weeks, you're going to start that program? I am, I am. I'm glad you shared all that too. Uh, a couple of quick things, the, um, the love language, I'm a big, big fan. Um, but an example of shallow versus deep, is knowing what you're giving love language is, but also what you're receiving love language yes. is, because they tend not to be the same. Yeah. I know it shocks everyone when they find that out, but it's a big deal. Um, my, my sister and my mother were almost exactly the same. And when they were separate, they're both really, really cool people. But when they were together, they, they battled all the time. How is that possible? Two really good people because they were way too similar. So the, they, they occupied the same space at every dinner, at every meal. And they, the two of them never figured out how to let the other one have space because the other one was having their space. And they just always struggled with that. So it was always so discouraging to watch two good people just have a terrible relationship until the, only, only the last year or so of my mother's life did they finally figure it out but took way too many years. So, but these are the things that you miss. To your point, this is what Young Living is all about. Pursue and invest. So one of the questions on here, do you recommend taking the test? Absolutely. Take the test again. Uh, if you haven't done the personality coach test, take it again. It's not unusual that it changes. Doing network marketing changes a lot of who you are. You, you start to see yourself in different ways because you're trying to present yourself to the marketplace in different ways. I really encourage you to take the test again. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to have all the, I'm going to have the, my disc stuff on my website, probably in a couple of weeks, I'm going to make it easy for you to go on and take the test or if you want to take the class and I'll help you through it. Whatever that dynamic looks like, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, someone also talked about wing two uh, on the Enneagram side, um, and I'm not an expert in Enneagram, but you got to recognize that there's a dominant number, right? So if I'm a nine and there's a wing two, and what is it? There's a, 
there's something in the circumstances causing you to retreat away from what your nine is. And so you, you're going to present as if you were a two in that moment, even though you're not a two, but it's because of what the circumstance was that drove you away from your dominant. It's the same thing when someone says they're blue, red uh, versus red, blue. And so it, it's a different, it's a different dynamic as to, okay, if I'm blue and I'm a fun loving, but uh, red's my secondary color, when does the red come in? There are circumstances and there are situations where the red becomes a play. And those are the things that you want to understand under what the, what are those circumstances? What does that look like? Um, I will, um, the disc test, by the way, is one of the ones that's a paid test. So I, on my website, you're going to be able to, to take that test um, in the future um, in a couple of weeks. By the way, that's just the nature of that test. The other, the other uh, personality tests, some of them have the, uh, the cheap ones, which you can take for free, but the, the results are not very, uh, very helpful. Uh, the way we do DISC, uh, the way I do DISC, because I, I, I'm going to give you a 30-page report as to what your answers are really helpful, and you'll be able to get a really good insight as to what you're, so it'll be worth the money that you pay for it. Do you, do you have a, a, any kind of books or something that someone can purchase besides doing the test that goes along with what you're teaching as well, or no? No, not this time. I, I, I will um, I'll pull together some, I'm going to take that as a good note, though. What are some other resources to get better on DISC? And I will, I will do that. I'll make some, I'll make that list available. Okay. Mm -hmm. I hate, I hate offering something that I'm not ready to produce yet, but I'm just finishing up uh, <coughs> some of the certification work so that I can be a good representative. That's awesome. It is Thank very you important. so much. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say it's very important and uh, it can help us all in many different ways. Um, so that's fabulous. And even just even, when you're helping your children, for example, if they're at home and understanding why you're doing this or why you're going to work or how you can value them in their time when you have that time with them and, you know, the separation anxiety. I mean, you can just use this for so many different things. Yep. Uh, but thank you so much for your time and for your future uh, tests that we'll all be able to use, utilize and pass on to our teams as well. And I'm sure that all of us here that heard this in the beginning will just be praying for you and your wife. Uh, oh, thank you. Cover. I had COVID too, and it knocked me down quite a bit. So I was out for like a month and a half. So yeah. I totally understand what it can do. It's it's uh, not biased, definitely. And it can do a Thank lot you. to someone. So uh, I'm sure a lot of us here have had that. So hopefully all of us can maintain our health and wellness and uh, keep doing what we are called to do. Thank you so, so. much, Stacey. I appreciate the time. I appreciate the Certainly thank you out to Amanda and Jill again for giving the opportunity. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, these calls will, are recorded, so they'll be posted on the Grow Group. Uh, and for Jill on call, you'll see that for the gr Go uh, gr Go. Oh my gosh, Grow Group. And sorry about that. And um, you'll get that pretty soon. So thank you all. Bye bye. Bye bye.